And I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us today. Uh, in Ontario, we have a stay-at-home order, and so worship today is coming from my home. I'm trusting that today that you will be able to experience God through the worship, that you'll hear from God through his word, and that your trust in God will grow deeper. We're looking at the trustworthiness of God. Uh, worship team is going to help us in worship. Uh, they recorded those songs before the state order, stay at home order went into effect. So uh, I'm thankful for, for their work. So friends, I, I want to uh, encourage you to, um, to just sit back, listen for what God's got to say to you, and to walk into all of what God has for you. I'm going to start off today by reading a scripture from Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. It says this, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Lord Jesus, my prayer is, is that you would use this time to call your people deeper into yourself. And if there's somebody who's listening who doesn't know you, and my prayer is that they would find you. Lord, I'm praying for people who have been wounded and hurt by life, that they would come into a new understanding of who you are. I pray this in Jesus' name.
A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 to 14. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Let us pray. Lord, I want to thank you that you know where we're from. You know each person who's watching here. Our lives have not escaped your view. You look at us and I know that you're on our side. Lord, some are finding this time really challenging. I'm praying, Lord, for perseverance and grace. Lord, I pray for the gift of encouragement so that people would give and receive encouragement. Lord, I'm praying for those who have special, the special needs. Lord, those who are sick, who've had bad diagnosis, who are dealing with uh, ongoing physical infirmities. My prayer is, is that you would, would comfort them, strengthen them, heal them. Lord, for those who are experiencing mental illness at this time, I'm asking that you would give great grace. You would help them to be easy on themselves. I'm asking, Lord, that you would, would speak grace into their lives. Lord, I'm also praying for those that have kids. And, and Lord, at this stay-at-home order, it's really challenging. So, Lord, my prayer is, is that you would, would speak grace to them and give them patience and endurance and joy in the journey. Lord, I'm praying joy for, for our whole church this year. Lord, that we might experience your joy. I ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 7, verses 11, uh, 7 to 11. Um, and we'll get there eventually, and that'll be just part of what we're looking at in terms of Scripture. Again, I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us. Uh, we're partway through uh, a series titled, The Lies We Tell Ourselves. Last week, we, we looked at a lie that said, God blesses me when I'm good and punishes me when I'm bad. So if something's going wrong in my life, I must be being punished by God. And we saw that that's a lie. Today, we're going to, going to look at a related lie, a lie that says, God, God is not entirely trustworthy. Or let me put a finer point on this by paraphrasing the Augustine quote that I used last week. Augustine said something like this. We, we do not understand why, why God allows uh, bad things to happen to good people and good things to happen to bad people, but then it's not entirely consistent. Good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad, bad people. And, and we found it unprofitable to ask why because God doesn't often answer the question, why? So, to put a finer point on, on, on the lie, if, if bad people, bad things happen to people who are following Jesus, 
If life isn't safe, how can I trust God? There's been times in my life when I've prayed for miracles and, and God has answered. There have been other times when I prayed for miracles and all I heard was silence. Is God trustworthy? I, I, I don't know how many people I've sat with who, who poured out their heart to me and, and uh, their story tells us that they're disappointed with God. For, for too many people, that story has created a wedge between them and God. They question his power. They question his goodness. They, they, they wonder if they, they should keep on following Jesus. Why, why should I follow Jesus if I, I asked him to, to keep me safe and he didn't keep me safe? And those are good questions and, and they're hard questions. I've been there. And it's not wrong to ask the question. But during those times, it's really easy to buy into the lie that says, God is not trustworthy. Today, I want to take you into the life of Jesus. Jesus is the true revelation of who God is. And the God that Jesus shows us has, has no malice or evil intention towards you. He is completely, completely good. So let me ta um, start by taking you to the Garden of Gethsemane. Those of you who know scripture and are familiar with the Easter story, you'll be familiar with that garden. Um, he is, Jesus, the next day he knows that he is going to be arrested and beaten and crucified. He knows the torture that he's going to experience. His anguish is so great that, that the scripture tells us it's as if he sweat great drops of blood. But listen to part of his prayer as, as he readies himself for that experience. Mark chapter 14, verse 36 says this. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. In the final hours, Jesus prays, Abba, Father. This, this is important because it, it reveals the God who Jesus knew. He could have prayed, Dear Father, but those words don't mean that the Father's good. But when he prays, Abba, Father, it is a, a term of intimate trust. Abba. You're, you're my dad in, in whom I trust. Uh, knowing what, what he was going to go through, Jesus still knew that, that God was good. God is trustworthy. He is a trustworthy father. So, so no matter what, he can, uh, he can be obeyed. In this moment of, of great doubt and extreme anguish, Jesus trusted his Heavenly Father. I think it's helpful to note that, that in spite of the fact that Jesus lived a perfect, sin, uh, perfect sinless life, he was severely tempted by Satan, he was hassled by religious leaders, he was almost stoned by his hometown, uh, the crowds loved him and then left him, he was betrayed by a friend, villainized by another crowd, and he was beaten and then crucified. Talk about bad things happening to good people. Yet having all this happen to him, he comes just before the crucifixion, he prays, Abba, Father. Th uh, Thomas Smale wrote this uh, of Jesus' prayer in the garden. The Father that Jesus addresses in the garden is the one that he has known all his life and found to be bountiful in his provision, reliable in his promises, and utterly faithful in his love. He can, he can obey the will that sent, uh, sends him to the cross with hope and expectation because it is the will of Abba, 
who lo whose love has been so proved that it can now be trusted so fully uh, by being obedient, obeyed so completely. This is not a, a legal obedience driven by uh, commandment, but a trusting response to know and love. So, when I encounter a world full of pandemics and political upheaval, and child molesters, and drug addicted moms, and alcohol addicted dads, I don't have to pretend that all is well, because it's not. But I can say, Jesus trusted his Abba. I will also trust God that I know to be good. I want to remind you of the Apostle Paul. Here's a man that has served God with all his heart. This is what he records about his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He, he says this. He's talking about uh, other people who have been sharing the gospel. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I'm, I am more... I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I have received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I, have, I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I, I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constrained or constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in dangers from bandits, in dangers from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in dangers in the city, in dangers in the country, in dangers at sea, and in dangers from false believers. I have labored and toiled, and I've often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst, and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. That's quite the, the litany of hardships. And yet, Paul gets to the end of his life, and he's writing his friend Timothy, the one who he calls a son in the faith. And here's what he says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. This is why I'm suffering here in prison. But I'm not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. I am sure that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Paul's life was anything but safe. It was hard. It was difficult. Yet he knew that God was still good. He knew that God is indeed trustworthy. One more set of verses until I try to pull this together. Jesus is talking to his disciples, proph uh, prophesying about the fall of Jerusalem. Some would say he is he's also talking about the end of time be, before Jesus comes back. Needless to say, he, there's going to be a lot of turmoil. Wars, famines, plagues, persecution. So listen to what Jesus says is going to happen. This is found in Luke chapter 20, verse 21, verse 16 to, to 19. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair in your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Did you catch verse 16? It says some of you will be put to death. And then 18, not a hair in your hair on your head will perish. How does that work? He's saying, disciples, you have the same God, but life will treat you differently. Some of you will be martyred, and some of you will be miraculously delivered, and both of you will be fulfilling God's plans. Jesus knew that God knows what he's doing, and he's still good. And you walk out your, your life, and God will be with you. Here's what you need to know. God has your best interests in mind. 
and that he is absolutely trustworthy. He is good even when life isn't. He's promised that he will never leave you or forsake you. And that promise is trustworthy. He said that when you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sin. He's faithful. He's trustworthy. He will and does forgive. You can trust him in this life with that, and you can trust him for the next, next life. He invites you into a relationship with him, and he says, To as many as received him, to them gave you the power to become children of God. That's a genuine invitation. And if you receive him, a relationship with him is yours. You can trust him for that. When, when he promise you, promises you peace that's wholly different than the world gives peace, that, that promise is trustworthy. When he promises to remake your internal life and so that you display what the Spirit knows and who the Spirit is, fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, that promise is trustworthy. He makes those qualities happen in us. You can trust him. See, you don't have to face a single situation alone. His promise to you is that he would never leave or forsake you. He's there with you, wherever you go, whatever you go through, whatever challenge you face, God is there. And let me remind you that we get, tend to get caught up in the immediate crises. Some people can't even extend their imagination beyond the end of the pandemic. We get so focused on the difficulty of our lives right now that we forget that this life isn't all there is. God has an eternal perspective. Life will not always be good, but God is always good. And he will make things right when we see him face to face in heaven. You'll be compensated for what you go through. You'll know the joy that is the Lord's. God is good and trustworthy. He, even when our eyes are blinded to that by the circumstances we find ourselves in. So let me speak to those of you who may be going through some difficult times right now. I want to urge you to beware of and repel the lie that says, God is not trustworthy. God is not good. But the question is, how do you, you sit in the middle of your pain and repel that lie? Well, I want to urge you, people who are there, to, to give expression to your pain in prayer. Don't just pray about the results you want, but pray about the state of your heart. Last week, I, I told you a story about Madeline. She was a two-year-old. She was coming to the end of her life. And this is a prayer that an Orthodox pastor prayed for the parents. And I think it's a good template for a prayer that we can pray in the middle of, of our pain and our suffering. Note how he expresses the heart and yet doesn't back away from the problem. Prayer goes like this. Our thoughts are not your thoughts, O Lord, and our ways are not your ways. We confess to you that we cannot see your divine hand in the suffering of Madeline. Help us, we beg you, to see that in this evil there's some purpose beyond our grasp and comprehension. Our minds are confused, our our hearts are in distress, our, our wills are lost and weak, and our strength is gone. As we see this innocent creature caught by the sin of the world and the power of the devil and the, the victim of senseless suffering and pain, have, have mercy on this child, Lord, have mercy. Do not prolong the agony. Do not allow the pain and suffering to increase. 
We know not what to ask. You give us the grace only to say your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us faith, for we believe. O oh Lord, help our unbelief. Be with your child Madeline and, and, and suffer with her. Heal her. Save her according to your own saving saving plan. Establish, establish before her the creation of the world. For you are our only hope. O oh God, and in you we take refuge. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. See, prayers like that, they don't diminish the situation. They express the confusion. They express the, I believe, but I doubt. And yet, ultimately, they lean into God. Prayers like that are sometimes the only prayers we can pray when we're going through real tough challenges. If you find yourself in a, in a situation like that right now, I would encourage you to pray that prayer. You can find the manuscript for the sermon on, on uh, the Asbury website. You can also go to the scriptures and look at a psalm like Psalm 13 and pray that prayer of lament because in times of pain, lament is sometimes the only right thing to do. How long, O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Is what the psalmist Davis said. For those of you who have been there and, and you've been in pain and you've come through kind of the other side of it, but you know that that pain has driven a, a wedge between you and God. Will you confess to God? God, I bought into the lie that well, you are not completely trustworthy. That you are not good. Forgive me. And allow him to bring you back into a, a fully restored relationship. He's there. He's waiting. The Bible says if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Now some of, some of you people may even have to go as far as to forgive God. Now, theologically, we know God can do no wrong. But sometimes the grudge that we've had against God has to be released. And God can handle it if you have to release the grudge by, by forgiving God. Now, for the rest of you, you're going through life, and life is okay right now, and, and there's, no, there's no barrier between you and God. The best way, the best way to um, fortify your heart against this lie that God is not entirely trustworthy best way is gratitude. To remember to give thanks daily, multiple times a day, for the, the, the good things in your life. The Bible says every good and perfect thing comes from above. And so when you give thanks for the beauty of the freshly fallen snow, when, when you give thanks for um, a warm place to live, when you give thanks for just the small gifts in your life. That has a way of allowing your heart to develop a deeper trust in God. Because you start to see all of what God has done. And it gets your, your focus off the things that you've wanted to happen but hasn't. I want to encourage you, practice gratitude. I know that some of you have been bound to this lie about God. You've written into your story that, that God cannot be trusted. I would encourage you to go back and say, Lord, forgive me. But I encourage you to start writing a new chapter. A chapter that walks from, from here and says, Lord, I don't understand everything. I don't understand why bad things happen to good people. I don't understand why bad things happen to me. But yet, I'm going to trust you. That you know what you're doing. That you understand me. That you're on my side. 
that you want my good, and that you'll eventually work it out. I want to encourage you, start a new chapter and walk forward. Lord, I pray for each person who has been through so much pain, and that pain has embedded a lie that you're not trustworthy. Even now, Lord, as they pray and confess that lie and own the truth that you are trustworthy, Lord, would you sweep into them and give them the strength they need? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Greetings, Dahl. I hope everyone is doing well and remaining safe out there these days. For those who don't know me, my name is Jamie Smith. I'm an assistant pastor here at Asbury. I'd like to take a few moments today and speak to you about a new film series we're doing here at Asbury. Starting February 16th and running until June 1st, we will be meeting online every Tuesday at 7 p.m. until about 8 p.m. This will be through our Zoom platform. We will be watching a video provided by Alpha Canada and then having an open and honest discussion about that week's video. The Alpha film series we'll be watching and discussing amongst ourselves is designed for today's audience. It was filmed all over the world and features interviews with world famous leaders and inspiring stories. This film series unpacks the basics of the Christian faith in an updated and engaging way. If you're interested and would like to sign up for this series, please contact me directly by sending me an email at jamie.smith at asburyfmperth.com. That's jamie.smith at asburyfmperth.com. I will then send you a link you will need to register for the series. I hope to hear from you all soon. God bless. Take care. Thank you for joining us today. I'm trusting that you were able to hear from God. The manuscript for the sermon is on the website. I would encourage you to go there, asbury.ca. I would, I would also encourage you to um, access the, the sermon questions that will be there uh, on Monday and uh, to, to see and to work through um, and take this topic just a little bit deeper. Thanks again for joining us. My prayer is that God's blessing will be yours and you'll be able to hear what he wants to say to you, see what he's up to in your life, and experiencing experience him in a fresh new way. Blessings on you.